Hi, I'm James Clifton, director of the Sarah Campbell Blaffer Foundation, which has a collection of European art here at the museum. Since tomorrow is Valentine's Day, we've chosen a couple of pictures to share with you whose subjects uh, drawn from uh, literature are of lust and uh, love. Both of them are 17th century paintings. The first picture, which is by Pierre Mignard, which you see uh, here, a French painter working in the uh, 17th century, comes from the ancient uh, poem by Ovid, the Roman poet, called the Metamorphoses, which is about the transformation of uh, various people in, in different uh, ways. The main subject here is uh, Syrinx, who was a woodland nymph in Greece, uh, a beautiful woodland nymph, and she was often chased by uh, satyrs. Uh, those uh, libidinous, uh, perpetually uh, lust-driven, uh, half-human, half-animal uh, creatures, uh, including Pan, whom we see here. And you can see that he has uh, goats' uh, hooves and uh, horns. Uh, happily, part of, part, part of him is obscured by the, uh, by the reeds. Uh, one day, Pan espies uh, Syrinx. Um, He's inflamed with desire, and so he chases um, after her, uh, approaches her, and propositions her. And uh, she says no, very emphatically. Ovid is very clear uh, that she says no to him. But he persists, and she flees. And he chases her to uh, the river, Leyden, which is represented not only by the water uh, here, but also by the river uh, god. And she uh, falls into his, uh, his arms. But she's essentially trapped against the river. Uh, by this, uh, by this satyr uh, desiring uh, Syrinx. And so she calls out to her uh, sister nymphs uh, to transform her in some way, to save her from, uh, from Pan. And so they turn her into uh, reeds. And what happens then is uh, she disappears, becomes these reeds, and uh, Pan is left uh, embracing uh, just this bundle of reeds, and we uh, already see it beginning to uh, to happen here, alluded to by the uh, by the artist. Um, he suffers a little disappointment. Um, he ruined uh, her life and uh, pays no penalty except for uh, a little bit of uh, frustration, perhaps. Uh, but then he notices that the uh, wind sighing through the reeds creates beautiful music, and so he cuts some of the reeds, uh, binds them together, and turns them into what came to be called the syrinx, or the pan pipes, with which he could make um, music. Uh, we're going to look at another painting now, from the, uh, also from the 17th uh, century. Um, uh, but as we uh, move over there, I, I might tell you that um, in the context of Ovid's Metamorphoses, the Pan and Syrinx uh, story, it's actually a story within a story. It's told by the uh, god um, Mercury to Argus, um, who is a thousand-eyed uh, watchman. And Mercury tells uh, Argus the story in order to put him to sleep so that he can cut off his head. Um, I hope that the story didn't put you to sleep, and I certainly had no intention of cutting off your head. Uh, our other uh, painting, uh, also from the 17th century, this one attributed to the Italian artist Pier Francesco Mola, though we're not really sure who painted the picture, comes from a very important 16th century um, uh, epic poem uh, called Jerusalem Delivered, Jerusalem, uh, Jerusalemme Liberata by Torquato uh, Tasso, which was first published in 1580. And it's a story of the conquest of Jerusalem by the Christians uh, to take it back from uh, the Muslims, uh, and, uh, which they finally did in 1099. And so it's about this uh, Christian army uh, arrayed against the uh, Muslim uh, forces, various um, uh, Persians and Egyptians and, uh, and so forth. And uh, it's actually um, a very fantastical uh, story. It's filled with uh, angels and demons and uh, wizards and uh, espionage and, um, and sort of strange enchanted voyages and, uh, and also some love stories uh, as well, usually of unrequited love. Uh, for example, the uh, Christian knight, Tancredi, who is uh, shown here, uh, fell in love with a uh, Persian warrior princess, uh, Clorinda, and ultimately he must, uh, didn't recognize her in battle because she was armored, and he ran his sword uh, through her, uh, which is not really the best way to pursue a uh, relationship. He, in turn, was loved by Armenia who was also a uh, Muslim, a princess of Antioch, and she had been captured by the Christian forces. But uh, Tancredi treated her very well. He ultimately gave her her liberty and also restored to her her uh, treasure. And so the poem tells us that, um, that her, her love was, was first lighted by his 
uh, by his virtue, but then it was kindled by his manly beauty. And so she spends part of the poem trying to find her way back to uh, Tancredi. Well, in the course of the uh, of the poem, the Muslim um, uh, warrior Argante challenges the Christian forces to a uh, single combat if they would send forth uh, their champion. And so they send forth uh, Tancredi, and the two have this uh, epic battle over the course of the day. But then a pause is called as night uh, falls, uh, and they go back to their respective uh, camps. Um, it's Erminia's job to, um, to tend Argante's wounds, but she puts on Clorinda's uh, armor and she sneaks through the lines trying to find Tancredi. Ultimately, some Christians chase after her and she ends up having to spend a few days disguised as a shepherdess. But then she makes her way to the Egyptian camp where she and Vafrino, who is uh, Tancredi's faithful servant, and we see him uh, here, then go and search again for uh, Tancredi. And by the time they get there, the battle has not only uh, resumed between Argante and Tancredi, but it is over. And they come upon these two bodies lying on this uh, blood-soaked earth, as Tasso describes it in uh, the poem. Argante is dead, and we see him here in the, uh, in the background, and Tancredi appears to be dead. Uh, Vafrino cradles him in his uh, arms, and Erminia uh, rushes uh, toward him. It actually looks like she's going to hurl himself onto Tancredi's body. Um, but what the poem tells us she wants to do is to uh, give him one parting kiss on his cold lips. And as she does this, and the tears are pouring forth uh, like a, uh, uh, as, as if in a river, uh, he's revived by her uh, tears. She realizes that he's alive, so she gathers some herbs and puts them on his uh, wounds and then binds them with her hair, which he has cut from her uh, head. And she and Vafrino then take, um, take Tancredi back to uh, Jerusalem, where he's restored uh, to health. Um, oddly enough, this is the last that we hear in the poem from uh, Tasso of the love-struck uh, Erminia, who only wanted to be recaptured by Tancredi uh, since he had captured uh, her heart. Um, Tancredi goes on to do other things, but we don't hear any more from Erminia. It's not even clear that Tancredi uh, ever even thanked her for saving his life, and I think this is the way it goes sometimes. So um, happy Valentine's Day to, to all of you. Thank you for watching.